I've come to the Japanese garden at Cowden in Clickmanonshire today. But why is there a Japanese garden in Clickmanonshire? Who created it? And what's so special about a Japanese garden? Well, let's go find out, shall we? The Japanese garden here at Cowden was established by Ella Christie. Ella was some lady who in the late 18th and early 19th centuries travelled extensively in Asia. Ella was in the first cohort of women to be elected Fellows of the Royal Geographic Society and she was the first Western woman to meet the Dalai Lama. Ella is known as one of a handful of pioneering explorers who broke with the traditional ideas of women in the later 19th and early 20th centuries, mounting far-flung expeditions to Tibet, India, Burma, China, Korea and Japan, as well as Russian Turkestan, and she was the first British woman to reach Kiva in modern Uzbekistan. The story is told of her standing at the bus stop and being asked if she was going to Edinburgh. Ella replied, no, Samarkand. In the early 1900s, she returned from an expedition to Japan, inspired by the magnificent gardens of Kyoto and Tokyo, and having undertaken a nine-hour walking tour around Mount Fuji. In many ways, the wider context for Ella's interest was the end of Japan's self-imposed isolation, opening up the, to the West its art, culture and nature. Ever the trailblazer, Ella engaged a female designer to develop the gardens. She was a gifted designer, Taki Handa, and Taki had the job of transforming seven acres in the grounds of Cowden Castle near Dollar in Clickmanonshire. It is the first and only one of such scale to be designed by a woman. In 1908, Ella had the burn dammed in a seven acre hollow, creating a small lake from which Taki Handa created Cha Raku N, the place of pleasure and delight. That, I suppose, answers the who and the why. So let's now consider just exactly what makes a Japanese garden so special. As the garden matured over the next almost 20 years, Professor Suzuki, 18th hereditary head of the Somi School of Imperial Garden Design, came regularly to prune the many important shrubs and trees. And he declared this garden to be the most important Japanese garden in the Western world. In 1925, Shinzaburo Matsuo, who had lost his family in an earthquake, came to Scotland and worked in the garden until he died in 1937. Apparently, in his wide pleated trousers, golf stockings, white spats and velour hat, he was often mistaken for the Japanese emperor. He is buried in Muckart Churchyard. Since filming this video, I have discovered that my great uncle, Donnie McGregor, worked as a gardener here at the Japanese Garden. I suspect that may have been in the 1930s and wonder if he worked with Shinzaburo Matsuo. It will be really interesting to find out. If you're enjoying this video, go below, click on the red subscribe button, hit the notification bell to make sure you find out when other videos are released and feel free to hit the thumbs up and leave a like. Thank you. There are three essential elements to a Japanese garden. Stone, which forms the structure of the landscape. Water, representing life-giving force. And plants, which provide the colour and changes throughout the seasons. Some sources indicate more than three, but I'm going with these three. As we journey through this garden, we will see elements of all three. Drawing from Buddhist, Shinto and Taoist philosophies, Japanese garden design principles strive to inspire peaceful contemplation. It has been said that the main purpose of a Japanese garden is to bring nature and serenity into our crowded lives. Having been here a few times now, I really appreciate this concept and people can be seen sitting peacefully enjoying the peace and tranquility all around the garden. It truly is a special place.
In 1963, teenagers scaled the perimeter wall and broke into the garden. The two tea houses and bridges were burnt to the ground and antique lanterns brought from Japan were pushed into the water during a night of mayhem. The garden was closed for some time after this to the public, but over the 1970s to 2000s, private tours and lectures were given to garden history groups. In 2012, the pond was dredged to clear weeds and locate the missing pieces from the antique lan lanterns. In 2013, Professor Masao Fukuhara from Osaka University of the Arts came to visit the garden and he was asked to restore it. Work started in 2014 and the charity The Japanese Garden at Towden Castle, which now looks after the garden, was formed. In addition to stone, water and plants, bamboo was used extensively in Japanese gardens and here at Cowden it features in some of the structures. Other features included in the Japanese garden are bridges, often following an arched design to accommodate boats going underneath or a zigzag design, said by some to prevent evil spirits from coming as they can only walk in a straight line but more likely to show one's journey through life with all its twists and turns. There are winding paths, offering a bit of mystery as to what is beyond the next corner. It is said that Japanese gardens often rely on subtle differences in colour and texture. There are statues of pagodas and lanterns. There are trees and islands in the middle of ponds, creating the illusion of a retreat. The use of reflections is evident as you look over the pond. There are fish and flowing streams of water creating a soothing and calming area, as well as raked gravel surrounding stones representing water flowing round an island. In addition to the more formal Japanese garden, there is a woodland walk offering shade. Woodland planting and the sound of a babbling burn as you take the path leading back to the ticket office, shop and cafe. Japanese gardens are about engaging the viewer and drawing them into an experience often of peace and tranquility. This Japanese garden at Cowden does exactly that and I can't recommend highly enough a visit to this beautiful garden if you are ever in the area. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed the Japanese garden as much as I did. If you did, go down below, hit the subscribe button, click on the notification bell, and if you feel like it, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to enjoy this well-earned community now, and I'll see you in the next video.